Welcome to episode six of Tap Haven. <laughs> we have a wait. This will, I, yeah, this will this will be this will be a fun one. Uh, I I think the first thing before anything before we even try the whiskey for the day. Ooh. Because one of one of our members just recently came back from the faraway lands of Japan. Oh God, yeah. Did you did you have any good whiskeys while you were there? I had no whiskeys while I was there, Eric. And let me tell what? you why. Oh let me no! Tell you why? Let me tell you why. Okay. Okay. We were in DefCon Five the entire time. <laughs> so, yeah. um, let's see. The first. The first day, we literally did not get to the hotel that we were supposed to. Oh, no. Um, we got off the plane, got on the Shinkansen. For those of you guys who are listening who don't know what the heck I'm talking about, Shinkansen is pretty much like uh, uh, short little puddle hopper flights in America. <laughs> Take about an hour, except you're on a bullet train that's going like hundreds of miles per hour. Um, and it gets you it to once from one city to the next in about an hour that would normally take about three or four hours by car um we get on get off on at tokyo station to kind of like get some food because we've been traveling for 24 hours and uh we overshoot our time so we get on the shinkansen to take us to kyoto and the train says to nagoya which is the last stop before kyoto it's the very last stop before kyoto where we need to be it's the very last one and i'm scrambling i'm like wait a second why does it say nagoya i ask the train agent i'm like hey does this go to kyoto he's like no nagoya stops nagoya and i'm like oh no i look it up and the trains stop after 11 o'clock So, and specifically the Shinkansen stop at 11 o'clock. Uh, so, we are hurtling hundreds of miles per hour to Nagoya with no place to stay and no way to get to Kyoto because it's a three hour drive. My uncle is in Tokyo, which is f- like seven hours away from Nagoya. So, <clears throat> yeah, that was the beginning of our trip, oh, and no. it 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 got it only got better, but that was the beginning of it. And so, I wanted to stay as far away from alcohol as possible because I knew I needed to be on it. I did not have any whiskey, unfortunately. That will be the next trip. Um, we plan on going back. Uh, I think once every year or once every two years we want to go yeah i'm 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 i want to go i'm going in 2025 so 2025 feel free to i'm going to be there for two months well a month and like a half months yeah wow Uh, wow that's going to be a lot of time so so i'm going to do i'm going to do a lot yeah i i would assume you would um I would say find a way to get to a Ryokan because my dude, Ryokans change your life. Being oh. able to go outside to a private onsen and just yeah. soak in a really hot bath. Oh. I don't understand why we don't have that in every single house just naturally. It doesn't make any sense to me that we don't. Oh, I'm in. I want to go back. Oh. But yeah, it was good. I didn't taste any whiskey and uh, duty free when I was trying when I was flying back because I was like, oh, I wasn't able to get anything like as I was traveling. So let me go ahead and pick up something as I was uh, as I was leaving. Selection was terrible. Oh. It, it was all uh, American uh, brands. There was no Four Roses. There was no uh, what was it? Yamazaki. Um, there was no uh, there wasn't even a Blatton's um, Black Label. Yeah, that's unfortunate, yeah. man. Unfortunate. No, I think what was it? There was another like twelve year that I was looking for. Um, that was I was supposed to be looking for because I had actually messaged these guys while I was there, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, I need to know what I actually need to pick up." 
and I found it wandering around, but it was marked up crazy. Like it was like three hundred dollars for the Yamazaki. And I was like, okay, that's gonna be a no. Yeah. So I am back from Japan, whiskeyless, unfortunately. And I know I know when I go to two of my stops are gonna be to the Nika and Suntory uh distilleries for sure. Ooh, <clears throat> that's gonna be dope. Yeah. Big Jealous. fan of their whiskeys. Well, I might be there. We'll see. Yeah. Dude, I'm I'm gonna be there for like a month and a half. I'm gonna I know a bunch of people are gonna come visit and during like that time period mm-hmm. uh, of course y'all are more than welcome uh, perfect perfect so make a make a trip up there while i'm there i'm i'm excited but well that that is pseudo unfortunate you didn't uh, <laughs> get to do any whiskey but i will say we're we're at the last vial of our first uh flaviar tasting here and probably the the one that I was excited about when getting this. This is the Breckenridge uh, PX. Um, no, um, this is the one I'm least excited about. Do you remember why? I I don't. I don't remember why. Because oh. when I opened everything, it was sticky. Oh man! Yeah. Because as it, cool as I think Flavia is, they need some cute quality control quality control oh, i lost see. a little bit you and it lost got a little bit sticky it's it, still sticky hopefully it didn't oxidize that much so so this one uh, uh man this one has a lot to it so the breckenridge distillery known as the world's highest distillery highest like, like altitude yeah so no, they live in colorado yeah yeah, oh, yeah. so this is in breckenridge <laughs> like on breckenridge <laughs> type of deal now the the guy who runs it, uh, Brian Nolt, first he he was a doctor before he opened up this distillery. He was a radiologist, and he went to Scotland. And he, he has a pretty funny story about that. And he was trying all these scotches, and he was essentially like like they don't caramelize their 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 mash enough, you know, like they don't. They don't get that little bit of sweetness. So he, he came back, started a distillery, and he likes rise. So a bunch of things um, kind of are set up in a way that I like for this particular whiskey. We'll talk about that in a second. But this is a high rye bourbon, 56% corn, 38% rye, 6% malted barley. Now, as I was about that. Because yeah. I think this will help the viewers, and I've been running into this lately. My brother-in-law is an interesting person uh-huh. because he has a very unique allergy that only triggers when he has alcohol and corn at the same time. Hmm. So it's exactly like the Asian flush, but yeah. since he's white, he looks like he's dying and going to go into anaphylactic shock, so everyone freaks out. But he's okay. He's just okay. warmer. A lot warmer. Um... <laughs> <laughs> like if you're cold give him a normal bourbon that has corn in it because most of them do but now that i've been shopping for the holiday season i have to try and find rye that he can have and i go up to a rye and then i see high rye and i see immediately that it says the percentages luckily and it includes corn and i'm like that's deceiving i have seen my brother-in-law many time drink a rye and fine. then it still happens. Yeah. And he's oh, like, yeah. what happened? This is supposed to be a rye. Rise? Why is this happening? So they, they talk about all these, uh, all these different bourbons, and each one is, has its own classification. But one of the main things, of course, for, for anybody out there who doesn't know, the, the way you kind of go about making bourbon <laughs> is you mix up a bunch of grains. You... Uh, you essentially grind them all down and then you cook them at a boiling temperature for some amount of time and then you add some yeast and that starts to ferment and create uh, create this super sludgy mixture of alcohol, essentially. Now, if you were to just take that and 
strain it and put it into a bottle, essentially you'd be getting a beer, something close to a beer. Okay. Now what they do for bourbon and whiskeys and stuff like that is they take this mash bill and then they put it through a pot, a still or some way to um, evaporate out everything but the concentrate mixture. And this is what they call like moonshine would be this. Um, okay. Gin would be this, although it has different uh, a mash bill, quote unquote, isn't really a mash bill. They m mix juniper and some other things. But then they go and they age it in barrels. Now, this mash bill that all these come uh, that we always talk about always tends to have a few basic things. These are mostly grains. That's what whiskey is made of. And when they say things like a rye whiskey, the mash bill can be whatever it wants, but a rye in particular, a majority of it has to be rye. This doesn't mean that it doesn't have corn in it or malted barley or red corn or some of the other things we've seen, just that the majority of that mash bill is rye. Now, Got it. when you're talking about a high rye bourbon, this means that it meets all the classifications for being a bourbon, and except that they have over some percentage of rye in it, and a majority uh, of the rest gotcha. of it is rye. And so these high rye bourbons typically have something like, you know, 51 plus percent of corn, 20 to 30 percent rye, and then whatever other things you want in it. Got it. Yeah, so what was interesting is right next to the high rye, because if, if you think about the words, high rye seems like it would have the most rye. But right next to it in the same brand was just rye whiskey. And that said 95% rye, 5% not corn. I can't remember what it was, maybe barley or something. And I was like, okay, he can drink this one. Perfect. But this is confusing, and I couldn't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, I just double-checked. For the U.S. government says a rye whiskey must be at least 51% rye. Yep. That's it. Okay. A majority rye. So, and that's why he probably gets in that situation so often. Because you literally have to go and research your bottle if it doesn't say it on, on it. So, and that's one of the reasons I love, what do you call them? Um, Bardstown and, and any oh, bottle man. that gives you details like the years, what's in it, the actual mash. I'm so much more likely to buy that bottle than those that do not. Yeah, no, I, I love that a lot as well. I like knowing uh, a little bit more about my whiskeys and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second because there's something funny about this whiskey that's interesting. Maybe not this one, but um, Breckenridge. Once they started, once Brian Nolt kind of came back and was like, I'm making whiskeys, he won a ton of awards, um, specifically for his base Breckenridge blended bourbon. Now, this blend of bourbon, um, if I remember correctly, was a blend of some Indiana bourbons, I think, maybe some Ohio bourbons, if I remember correctly, and then, of course, some Colorado, some of their own bourbon that they made. This particular uh, uh, one that we're trying here is the PX edition. Now, what's interesting about this is they took their bourbon, as far as I understand it. I couldn't find anything confirming this, but I, I, from everything that I've read, it seems like they take only their in-house bourbon and then they age them in uh, Pedro Ximenez grape sherry casks. So... Pedro Ximenez Ooh. grapes are from Spain, and essentially these grapes are light grapes. They sit out in the sun, and they get super, super sweet, and they'll take them, and they'll mash them, and they'll put them in Solera barrels. Solera and barrels. Solera barrels aren't actually the type of wood. That's kind of um, a misnomer. Um, this is actually... Uh, it's Spanish for on the ground. So all of these barrels are typically on their lower, their lowest level, right? And so they fill up these barrels and there are some charts on this, but it's essentially your lowest level of barrels. 
And so they created these sherries, and Breckenridge was able to get a bunch of these barrels imported, and now they age their bourbon in them to create this PX sherry cask. Um, it's a minimum year of three years. Oh. And so essentially, this has a few things that I like. I like Angel's Envy, right? I like some mm-hmm. sherry finishes, especially mm-hmm. with the hotter bur- bourbon. I love so rye. Thing doesn't say cherry on it. Yeah, I love rye. <laughs> a little cheat sheet. Oh yeah, a little cheat so of sheet. Course, of I've, course, some of these are similar to cherry, so like I, I could see how they would pick raisin and figs instead of cherry, mm-hmm. while you might taste cherry. Sherry, sherry. I'm saying a wine. Well, then, sherry. <laughs> yeah. Sherry. Sherry. Okay. Sure. I can see that on the list now. It's very tiny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Promise, I, I did not pregame. Okay. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> this Lies. is coffee, not vodka. Hmm. But, but yeah, so you should be getting, this is going to be on the sweeter side, even before tasting it. You're like, the sherry wines are a dessert wine, almost, especially from uh, Pedro Zimenez grapes. But I'm hoping that we get some of that spiciness, rye spice up front with a little bit of heat mixed in with those that sweet cherry flavor. And, uh, Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. He's going That's in so now. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm always ready. All right, shove your nose in there, toss some of it out. Or the whole, let's toss all of it out. Ooh. Smells pretty great. Yeah, the smell is hot. Ooh. The smell is really nice, but you definitely get a little bit of that orange on the nose. Like I get some citrusy notes. I get a lot of rye. It It almost tastes, yeah, it is, it, it has a nice spice to it. Oh, it's good. This is easily, if you're getting the Flaviar pack, that, I mean, this is the one to get it for. Yeah. Right? Don't say it yet. We have to get to our ratings. Jeez, oh, we, we got to get there. We got to get there. This just proved my point, man. What? This just proved my point. What? I don't know how many weeks ago I was saying that I bet these are designed just like the flights we had in Kentucky, where A and B are like, okay, sure. <laughs> but usually there's a third and or a fourth one and when you drink the third one you're like oh this is better yeah. right how much is this one? Oh, no wonder <laughs> so i have not looked on. up ahead of time the price this time i'm resisting okay good okay. for you so that i can take part in the guess guessing yeah. game yeah. properly oh okay you knew i was gonna say it this time <laughs> so yeah this is a very approachable bourbon i would say out of the th- last two that, two out of the three that we've tried okay from this colorado set of whiskeys this one is um by far my favorite you get a lot of that rye hot flavor it gets a nice little heat burn on the back end that radiates for a little bit but it's very tasty She's it's very like sweet warm. fig i definitely get the figs i definitely get some of that orange but I wow. get a lot of that rye and sherry sweetness. This is really good. I mean, I think I can tell that this is a real rye. They're not, they're not doing one of those weird things where you infuse a fake PD flavor into it, and then people like me smell and taste super glue. This is, uh, yeah. I kind of needed this because I think Matt might have been in the same boat where we were like, oh, we love rye. Rye's amazing. Oh my gosh. And then we had bad rye. Bad rye, bad rye, bad, bad rye, rye. Dude, and holy. It's been that way ever since for me. We, we have yet to get a nice rye. And this one's doing good, I, th- yeah. I think. This is very pleasant. I would say the only downside to this drink, kind of playing devil's advocate here, because I do mm-hmm. like this one quite a bit. The only downside I would say is that if you're into scotches and more traditional whiskeys this one is a little sweet i mean it has that sherry finish and Mm -hmm. it it, with that comes a little bit of sweetness 
But I think in, in regards to some that are too sweet, this one has a nice rye heat to it that kind of balances that out a little bit. I mean, the thing is that, like, the sweetness is extraordinarily subtle, but definitely yes. there. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like a European chocolate. Like, yeah, I, I get a little bit of that chocolate. In it. Like, almost like a so, dried fruit, like a candied dried fruit type of deal. Mm -hmm. I, would, mm -hmm. I would not classify this so much as a, I would not call this a sweet whiskey. Because no, people, yeah, because people expect it to be actually sweet. This is, it's hard to describe it without making someone go, I'm never going to try that because you use the I, word sweet. I could see that. You know I what could I mean? see that. Yeah, no, no, no. I think you're 100% on something there. And I think the problem mm. is I've had much sweeter whiskeys, much. but I've also had much less sweeter whiskeys. So this lives in this middle ground, kind of like Angel's Envy, where there's some heat and there's some sweetness. And I would almost classify this as the... Umami! And no. I don't, it's umami! I don't, it's, definitely <laughs> it's definitely not umami. It's definitely not umami. I would oh, say this is the, the baby brother of Angel's Envy. I, I will say, and this is like, like check me if if you must. I'm gonna play devil's advocate. This is nice, however, it is very short lived. Yeah, it's only forty five percent alcohol. So yeah, it's, it's, pretty... it's there and it's gone. Agreed. I this I, do, I would love to try this barrel strength. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Barrel yeah. strength would change a game here. Like Amazing. it would be so good. It would be full. It would be. I think it would be also fuller bodied because, like, I know that you guys are saying that this this tastes better. I will also play another the other devil to my devil's advocate and say that this is good, but it's. I wouldn't say it's like too very special. To be honest, it's it's very middle of the road for me. Dude, you know what? So I think you'll be. Uh, I think you'll be interested by my rating. But I would say is there is one thing we haven't talked about yet, mm. and that's the um, the mouthfeel. This mm. is the most viscous of the last few whiskeys that we've had, and I that's because of the sherry cask, because mm. sherry is very viscous, and I think it's causing a lot of that almost syrupy nature to it. Right, but this one's has like coats your mouth a little bit better than the last few we've tried by far. Mm hmm. Oh, look at him looking at the color. Well, the, the color is very rich. It's very, and, uh, and very honey, very much like honey. Yeah, it has a honey. It almost has a honey texture and a honey <laughs> color. The mouthfeel sure. is, is very good. It's very enjoyable. It's um, it's very subtle. Yeah. So, like you said before, this is a great introductory bourbon for someone that's never had something that they like. Agreed. I would. Agree. Is this a bourbon? Sorry, is this, I, I said bourbon. This is a bourbon. This is a, bourbon. This, this is a bourbon. bourbon. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I would say out of, the three, out of the three that we have, this is the actual intro whiskey. A hundred percent. I think I this is These where yeah. this yes. is where people should start, and especially if you're on the West Coast, like supporting local distilleries mm -hmm. like these uh the guys at breckenridge are even with this they're definitely trying to make really good product here like this is a very nice introductory whiskey now how how nat how much would you pay for it for this 750 mil wow sir calm down <laughs> uh, we gotta make sure we're talking the right Size, right? Because uh, I mean, I would buy one and three quarters. I would say this is a fifty, sixty dollar bottle. It, no, 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 no! I'm not asking what you think I the bottle is. Too. I'm asking what price tag 
when you walk into the store makes you buy this whiskey? Oh, um, like what are you paying? What are you like? Oh yeah, if it's this price, I'm buying it. I'd say thirty-five. Okay, Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> I was not taking another sip. And I like, saw. Um, I saw. Perfect timing. <laughs> okay, so if this was, I okay, I'm gonna give you my guess first. My guess is that it's fifty. Same. I'm guessing that this is a fifty dollar bottle for seven hundred and fifty mils, which annoys me because this bottle could be very dangerous if it was thirty five, like Nat wants. Mm -hmm. I want it to be $42 because then I am very likely to buy it because it's a little bit pricey but not too too much you and then I don't feel too bad about drinking this way too fast because this is very dangerous this is this is a drinking bourbon this is a bourbon if you haven't seen the show Peaky Blinders this is a bourbon that you pour as much as they pour you fill it all the way up and you can drink it like water true you could. It would hurt, but you could. <laughs> yeah. So I, <clears throat> I'm pretty much in agreement with Anthony. I, I think that if this was about a 42 to $45 bottle, it'd be on my radar constantly. Right mm. now, it averages about 60 yeah. And so yeah. I understand the reasoning behind that. We're talking three years in a barrel. Eight, uh, I think it's eight weeks in uh, sherry casks, and that's a good amount of time. I think there would be, there's a strong argument to try from a marketing perspective to get this down to 45. I think at 45, it's competitive. This this is competitive, if not dominates the cask, the finished whiskeys in that price range. I think oh, definitely. I think if you get it down to forty five, and you're a person who likes uh, finished um, whiskeys, there isn't a lot in the forty to fifty dollar range that could compete with this. I, th I think it's in a pretty good spot. Now, I think once you get to the sixty seventy dollar range, there's a lot there. There's a lot. Yeah, there. there's there's a there's a lot in that price range that is very good from the finished. The, the finishing series of whiskeys. You know, you mm -hmm. that's when you start to get the Red Breast 12. That's when you start to get, you know, uh, like your base Angels Envy bourbons, right? Like that's where you start to get a lot of these heavy hitters that are really, really good. And that's why I think this thing is kind of boxing outside of its uh, yeah. weight. Let me, let me put it this way. Your Angels Envy bourbon right now, is running forty to fifty dollars? No, no, sir. Really? Right. I would take an Angel's Envy over this any day of the week, hands down. You could I, blindfolded hand behind. No, my no. Back you have to remember to our our your experience of Angel's Envy is a little bit different. It's very skewed. Yes, you have had the best Angel's Envy. I would I would recommend at some point we try the base model of angels envy bourbon that isn't from the honeywell you know that's true but at the same time i i don't think that with that as even as with that as its precip like near its precipice because i have to assume also that there are whiskeys above that within angels envy um agreed if that with that being a stepping stone within the mountain that is Angel's Envy, I would not go down the mountain and then go up another for this whiskey, if that makes any sense. A hundred percent. That makes sense to me. I think for better or for worse, if you're marketing a finished whiskey, you're competing with Angel's Envy in that price range. And exactly. if you aren't at least matching their price, because... The the great thing is obviously that you have your Angel's Envy bourbon, which of course is finished in port wine barrels instead of the sherry uh, mm -hmm. wine barrels. Those are going to be two different flavor profiles, and so if they're matching that price, you're going to have a split. Some people are going to like this better. Some people are going to like the Angel's Envy better, and you're going to be in a competitive market. 
I think if you're talking about paying $20 more for this, not 20, but $15 more for this, then you start to, you start to run a hard bargain. Absolutely. I would say that if they were if they were boxing around thirty five to forty five, if they were in within like low high, if they were anywhere within there, then I would say that this was like an absolute buy. But with it being sixty dollars, there's there's so much on the market that fights at that weight and is very strong. Yeah. Um, I mean, Angel's Envy is just one, but I mean, I've. I haven't sampled the red breast that I that I picked up yet, but I've had it with you guys. And well, no, you you didn't have the red breast twelve. Have, you I had mean, it. I mean, I, I mean, I had a I had a scale of red breast, right? So a different ball we, game, though. We won't, we won't talk about it. We won't talk about it. Yeah. Anyway, I I I tread on that path in a, a little bit, and everything that I tasted along that along that way. It points me to believe that if I open that bottle right now and I do a taste test between this and that, I'm going with that 100%. Especially because yeah. it's it's 12 years inside the barrel. Yeah. I, I how that's you, how you gonna, that's how you so such me, a solid argument. You know, it's how, like how are you going to tell me 3 years and you're I'm like you've given 3 years of of the aging process into this. It's given you not even double it's giving you almost not not quadruple, but at least sorry, no, it is quadruple. It is it is quadrupled the amount of time inside of a barrel for finishing and for proofing. Overall, it's just going to have a, a much more deeper, richer experience. I, yeah. It might not even be my like yeah. my favorite my favorite bourbon. But it's going to be a much more richer experience compared to what we have here with the Breckenridge. Yeah. No, I uh, I tend to agree. So uh, a couple of notes, though. Yeah. Oh. I will say that on the bright side, you can have what we just drank, but without the sherry finish. So everything's the same. Three year. Somehow it's only forty three percent. Somehow it's less alcohol instead of more even though it's younger i don't understand that are you talking which one are you talking about the breckenridge bourbon whiskey oh a blend it, it's likely it, the same stuff because well, it's also three it's, years high rye that's their uh, blend though so that includes yeah. their so when they're talking about the high rye they're talking specifically about their mash bill but they're blending that with two or three other whiskeys from other distilleries. I think that this one, as far as I understand it, and this is where maybe somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, because I couldn't find any good information about this. But maybe. from what I could find, I think this one is specifically just their in-house bourbon and not their blended bourbon. It would be impressive. Toward- um, but unfortunately... On their website, I think I found a clue. Okay. Oh. They have these tags for like award winning things. Yeah. And on what we are drinking right now, <laughs> it says World Whiskey's Award 2021 Best American Blended. Mm. Uh... So yep. there's a chance that it is the same thing. It, it, yeah, it won I, in 2019 I, and 2018 and then in 2022 it got the world spirit it won the world spirits competition in San Francisco. Actually got double gold. So a double one. So what you're saying is that they're kind of riding a little bit on a bit of a high in terms yes. of recognition, which would probably make make a little bit of sense as to why this level of bourbon from this brewer, this distillery is inflated i could yeah this is interesting i have more good news weird the stuff that i was talking about that i'm more interested in trying because it might be slightly less sweet so maybe it'd be a little bit better the breckenridge bourbon whiskey a blend that's only 43 dollars mm-hmm. but if you wanted to get a 1.75 liter it's only 65 dollars which is a steal hmm. that's insane so saying you're gonna get me more liquor oh yeah for less money but in in 2012, <laughs> that one got a, an award, 96 points for something. In 2016, it also got the 
World Whiskey's Awards Best American Blended. And then in 2023, so very recent, it got the San Francisco Double Gold. Nice. So it beat what we're drinking right now. Yeah. Because what we're drinking right now got double gold last year and hasn't gotten World Whiskey's Award Best American Blended in forever. Yeah. Uh, Maybe they're not competing anymore. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, it, we'll have I to mean, look into the details about how you enter Definitely. into the composition. Definitely. But yeah, I, yeah, I'm see what they're selected selected selection. I'm gonna buy that A blend if I see it. Yeah. I've seen some of the A blend at the store. I definitely want to try more. So I will say the one thing about this bourbon that I do really like is it definitely I I I look highly upon the Breckenridge company. I, I think there's something here. If they had things Absolutely. like their barrel proof, if they had things with a little bit more heat behind it. Stuff like that, I, I'm definitely interested because I think the flavor profiles that are here are really good. I think they're a little bit muted, um, and I think there's room to grow, but it is definitely a great introductory whiskey. Definitely worth picking up a bottle to try if you have the spare funds. Um, if your name is Greg, this is a great bottle to uh, drink in one weekend. If your girlfriend. Greg... <laughs> so uh oh so, so anthony what are you rating this Ooh, yeah that's a tough question um deep into your soul i'm gonna work backwards from 10 if it's, it's, it's gonna lose a point for price it's gonna lose a point for not being as I wish it was a higher proof. So if it was barrel proof, maybe it'd be better. It's going to lose a point because for me, there's not much on the nose. It's not bad, but it's not like something where I'm actually smelling something delightful. And I've tried a lot. Y'all might have noticed me trying way before we started drinking it because I have the weird nose. Yeah. And usually after a while, I can smell something, and I'm still not <laughs> smelling anything. So we're down to seven, and that was what my first gut reaction was going to be, was seven, even without doing this whole breakdown. So, seven. Now, seven. Would, you, would you say that this are, is better or worse than the Maker's Mark 46 cask strength? Mm. Ooh. It is actually better because it tastes better you want to know your rating for that one i one second <laughs> i'm not ready i can't remember my rating oh. but the i really like you know the finish on that on that cask strength maker's mark but if i remember right because i've had it a, a, d decently a lot recently oh you've been drinking. just a little too bitter so I'm hoping my rating on that one was a six. Mm. Ooh. It was a seven point seven. Ooh. No. Would you would you say that this one is your new seven and that one is your six? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning. Look, I'm getting better. No, 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 at this. no, no, no. I'm just I I'm just keeping you know making sure all our rate i'm trying to make oh, sure we have a eric we have a solid would, graph here. eric would have a you know? spreadsheet of our rating <laughs> i could go and up on his no 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 let me finish because <laughs> <laughs> the world has to know <laughs> eric would have a spreadsheet of our ratings to compare in real time as we <laughs> give them so that he could be like well is it your favorite over this and then it's like a freaking like who wants to be a millionaire like music dun, 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 dun. <laughs> of course and you're like maybe i don't know <laughs> of course <laughs> matt oh man. what is your rating so what would you give it i would give this oh man what would i give it i'll say this i would give this a it's almost it's almost an eight i think no 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 it's almost a seven i think almost a seven almost a seven we're, i so i would put like it a, at a 
six point five, six point seven. I'm not even gonna do halves. I'm gonna say it's a six. Okay. I'm gonna say it's a six because I feel like everything is there. It's just not polished enough for me to consider it above middle of the road. It's definitely not in the bottom end of that median space. There's definitely a lot of positives going along for it, but it's just not polished enough for me to be able to say that it is superior in anything that it's presenting. I feel like 7 through 10 would be like, okay, I'm seeing that one thing in particular about the bourbon is really speaking to me. And nothing about that whiskey spoke to me other than the fact that it tasted good. Some uh some some guys gonna come back and uh you know fact check me of course so on on record oh. I am I am changing my cast strength maker's mark to a six uh, as Ooh. well just putting it what out was, there what was my cast strength your your cast strength was at um uh a six or a five depending on the day. Ooh. Let me go. <laughs> Eric, what was yours? Mine was a six point five. Oh wow! But I'm I'm downgrading it to a six just to make whole numbers easier. Um, I would say that this one I I give it a five. I think Ooh. this is the 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 bar minimum the the minimum bar for a good bourbon on the market. I think the price range is a little high for it. I do think it's a little short on its stay. I would like to see a little bit more heat on it. I think 45% is just a little bit too low for me. Um, that's more of a personal note. Um, but there are a lot of things I really, really love about it. I think there's so much potential, and I think it's definitely worth a buy. Um, and that's kind of where I consider like yeah. the, the minute you get to like a five, that's where I consider you should at least try this whiskey. I think the whiskeys that are five to 10, these are ones you should try. You might love this whiskey. If you like something that's not too hot, it's a nice, easy to drink whiskey. Uh, if you can get it for its low price point of like 52 or 50, which not I've bad. seen it, uh, I've seen some people say they got it for 50, but I, I, I can't. But if you can get it for around 50 bucks, 55 bucks, this could easily be your everyday drinker, especially if you like sherry over something like port. And the Angel's mm-hmm. Envy isn't doing it for you, right? Fair. A few extra dollars, and this will be right up your alley. Um, did, did it get hotter for you guys over time? It actually got lighter for me over it time. It got lighter. It okay, got lighter so I'm a little too. confused because I, I think it got hotter for me, but I believe my last two sips were bigger than the rest. So there might be a proportional level of heat and spicy finish the bigger the gulp. And this is like really easy to take big gulps. You did? Yeah, I took a pretty big pull and it was pretty light. I like the first Mm. pull, I was like, oh, you're a little warm, aren't you? But like as I got into it, I was like, oh. Yeah, I I did like two primers. So I did my one that was straight through and then my one uh, that was kind of like coating my mouth. And then I did my chew. My chew was my first big sip. And then I did two other big sips after that. Um, so this might be a unique situation, but now that it's empty, I smell like barbecue pulled pork. Now that might I be got, because I, you know I, what I got something very similar to that. I think I got okay. some sort of sweet barbecue like smell. A jar? Yeah, almost yeah. like almost like a sweet tangy smell. Okay, so maybe it's not just me because I was going to yeah. say yeah. I can I smell my wife right cooking now. turkey pho right now, and. It smells amazing. How no, I, dare I, you? <laughs> How dare you say turkey pho on this podcast? I think it's pho. You fucking invalid. Oh my God. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I think this is what everybody should look for in an introductory whiskey. If you're trying to introduce your friends to a whiskey that is very approachable, um, a little bit sweet, uh, but also a little bit of heat and kind of just a nice stepping stone into the genre. I think this one's well worth it um, by far. You should at least get it once. This is definitely one that you should try if you like it. 
it's going to be good. Yeah. I would honestly change my rating down to a five because I do believe that there is room for growth with the whiskey. Uh, sorry, with the bourbon, really. But uh, yeah, I'd have to agree that there, there's just it's it is a great student. It's just it it just needs to study a little bit more. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like the metaphor. It just, yeah. It just needs more time. It just needs more time to cook. Like, let him cook, please. Yeah. There's a lot there. So, uh, now we'll, we'll, we'll kind of touch on you first. What have, what have you been playing while you were in Japan? Did you get to play any games? Did you, or, or better yet, a, a fun story from Japan? A fun story from Japan. Let's see. Um, ha. I'll tell you guys about how we almost didn't make it to our uh, Ryokan. So uh, there's a great story. I love it. And I'll probably be telling it to our kids. <laughs> so Hakone is a mountain township in the southern prefectures of Japan. It is a little remote. Getting out there is a train ride. And from what I found out, another tram that goes up the mountain, followed by a bus ride to the Ryokan. Right? Um. I didn't know that going into this trip. So I just routed it as normal through Google. And Google says that you go on the on the rail, you take it until you get to the Kanto area, I think it was Kanto. You get off, probably Pokemon that's getting in the way of that, honestly. But anyway, also, get off for the anyone, anyone with my brain, uh, he didn't go to a con, not a convention. This is an inn. Hakone. Ryo-con. Oh, Ryokan. 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 Yeah. And, and I'll explain what Ryokan means once we get there. Yeah. Um, we get there, and I'm like, okay, we need to get on this bus, and it is 30 eight stops 38 yeah. 38 stops. stops so we get we barely get to the bus before it leaves without us get on the bus and we are on there for 37 stops and i hold my bladder at full capacity for 37 Oof. stops sorry no 32 stops and at the 30 second stop, I can't hold it anymore. I have to, I have to go to the bathroom. So we get off the bus. It is five stops from the Ryokan. It is now 430. Whoa. Mark it in your heads. Yeah. It's 430. Sun's still kind of out. But as you've noticed with the seasons, the sun is setting earlier in the day. Yeah. It is starting to get a little dark. I go to the local family mart. I saw it as we were driving by, and I was like, I need to pee there. Um, get off the bus, go pee, come back to the bus stop. We have all of our bags. By the way, if you're going to go to Japan, please pack light. It is so worth it not to worry about pulling a carry-on or anything else with it. If you can put it inside of a backpack, please live that way. It's so much easier. If you're a woman and you have to have fits, totally understand just bring a small carry-on so it's a little bit easier for you. It'll save your fucking life. I promise you. Anyway, um, get back to the bus stop. Uh, we find a pair of left like prescription glasses, and we're like, oh, we'll just go ahead and like kind of fool around with these until the bus shows up. Um, the bus doesn't show up for its next stop. It is now 4.45. Okay. The bus that, that doesn't show up for its second stop. It is now five. Right? Mm-hmm. Everybody there. Yeah. 5 now, p.m. No bus. Gotcha. As you, as you may have recalled, the sun is setting earlier in the day. Yeah. The sun is starting to set. Right around we five. Starting yeah. to, right around five. Um, we start considering, well, maybe we have to go up, up this hill. It is at least a... 25 to 30 degree gradient up this mountain. Mm. We are five stops away 
on a bus. It is at least a 20 minute hike yeah. up the mountain yeah. to get to the Rio Con with oh. 80 pounds of baggage. I've gone up a mountain in the dark before. It's not fun. Not good. Not, not fun. fun. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we have to make a decision. Sun's starting to set, and we can't be out here just like sitting waiting for a bus that's not going to come. Yeah. We're at a three car intersection. There's a resort off to the right. And we're like, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and start hiking it. Right? While we're doing it, going up the mountain, and we're turning around every single, like, every five, ten seconds to make sure that the bus isn't now coming up the hill. Yeah. (laughs) It's not. Right? We do five minutes of hiking, and I'm like, there's no way. (laughs) Guys, I have her bag. I have my bag. And I have my uh, carry on, right? And I'm trying to go up the hill. I have never been so humbled with my own cardiovascular <laughs> actual like performance in my entire <laughs> life, guys. Uh, I lit- I made it two and a half minutes up, and I was uh, bre- I I was literally shitting myself. There was no way. Oh man, there was no way, guys. Man. So I'm like, you know what? There's no way. I, I'm sorry, babe. I can't make it up this mountain. And I, it killed me to say it to my wife. Then she was like, no, we need to go down. Like, there's no way. So yeah. we're, we go, we're going back down the hill. And what is coming up the road? The bus. Oh, God. The, like, before the bus stop. So Oof. we sprint down. downhill. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to stop this bus. There's no way you're going to leave us here. So (laughs) I sprint across a three-car intersection to stop the bus. How busy are these roads? Like, It's a mountain township, so not really busy. But there's enough cars to be like, this is a little dicey. Yeah. So I run out there. Nobody's honking at me. Yeah. So I'm guessing crazy American is a oh, common oh, feature. Which, which, by the way, I, I should go ahead and note it. This is uh, like illegal, right? In Japan. Like, oh, jaywalking is like super illegal there. It's like really frowned absolutely. upon. Absolutely. But there's no uh, lights to go ahead and indicate when you should cross. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I, I should be fine. But with on- oncoming traffic and people stopping, you should be giving them right away as cars or whatever. No. Uh, I almost literally like jump out in front of the bus to stop them and it's a younger yeah. guy who's driving the bus I can't even like I'm so panicked I can't even get get the name of the Ryokan out to the bus uh, driver so Mel my wife like comes out around behind me and tells him where we're supposed to be going because I'm like the place the, the resort the resort up the hill and she tells them where we need to go. I route it into my phone and show them where I need to be. He says, get on the bus. We get on the bus. It's the bus line. It's where we're supposed to go and it's where it's supposed to take us. Right? So we get on and I am relieved, but just like so panicked. Mind you, this is the, this is the second miss like major travel mishap we've had the entire trip. So I'm just like, Oh God. Ah, oh. terrible. So we start going up the mountain. I'm not looking at my phone, so I'm not tracking where we're actually supposed to get off. So we go past our stop. And it's only it's, it's only by a little bit because we stop for something and I'm like, wait a second, something doesn't feel right. He's not stopping at every single stop. Right, because oh, people gosh. aren't at, people aren't at every single bus stop. Yeah, so you, he has no re- He just he, flies by. Do they have the thing, the pull? He has the button, but I don't know to press the button. I'm oh, an American. No. I oh, showed no. you where I was supposed to go. Right, you should know. Oh, You're supposed no. to take care of me. I'm a baby. Oh, no. I'm just a little girl. Oh no, you got to press the button. <laughs> you got to press the button. I didn't know that. Oof. I'm a nubile child from the Americas. I don't <laughs> yeah. know anything. Yeah. So anyway. We get past the Ryokan. Oh, and gosh. I'm like, I, we stop at a random bus stop and I'm like, hey, 
this stop have we stopped here and he was like ah and he's exasperated and i'm like oh Dude, god oh no i am twice your size and i'm stressed the fuck out i need you to level with me because i guarantee you i i can get louder than you i promise you i promise you <laughs> So he's like, okay, uh, get off here and go down this hill. Now there's two hills. There's one that goes up and to the left, the bus, the way that the bus was going. And then there's one to the right that goes up and then down. And it's a sharp decline. Now, now just for the audience here, how, how, how much Japanese do you know? Um, Nihongo, not Jozu. Not Jozu. Uh, Not Jozu at all. Oh, that's so. Uh, I know phrases. Jozu Arimasen. Jozu Arimasen. Jozu Arimasen. This guy. No. Nai. Nai this. Nai this. So I've gotten better since I've been there, but yeah. absolutely not passable. So he, something I didn't realize about going to the mountains with, with Japanese people who are out there. It's a common feature of people in in like the major cities to know a little bit of uh, English, not so much in the mountain areas. So when you're showing them the places that you need to be explaining where you need to be, the meaning is not conveyed. Not at all. Nor is it nor is it emphasized that this person doesn't know my language. Therefore, I might need to go ahead and check with them to make sure where they need to go. Right. Yeah. So we get off, and he sends us down this hill, and he just drives the fuck off. Yep. Oh, yeah. He ain't, he ain't going to make sure you're in the right place. Oh. No, no. It is 5.30, y'all. Yeah. The sun has set. Yeah, it's, it's dark. Dark. It's <clears throat> fucking dark. Um, and we're heading down this hill, and I'm like, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't this doesn't feel like we're going to like a really ritzy Rio. Like we're not going to like a private onsen area. This doesn't feel like it. There's no there's no way. So me and Mel are having like a brief discussion and then some European tourists come down a hill and they're like, oh, no, there's no um, in down this way. This is like the way to the train station. And I'm like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. There's a train up here. Oof. probably a local um, line. When I tell you, oh, yeah, it was probably a local. I mean, Japan has so many local. different local lines. The yeah. thing is, Google had the line in the phone. Oh, it oh. did not route it. So I was just like, dude, I'm I'm going to whoever was on that decision. Anyway, oh. focus. We I take out my phone and I start routing it. I'm like, OK. If it takes us further up this mountain, I'm going to lose it. Yeah. Thank God we actually passed it and we are five minutes downhill from the Ryokan, right? Nice. We start going down the hill. It is dark and f- cars are coming downhill at downhill speed. <laughs> yeah. And it is relatively safe on one side of the road so we stay on one side of the road uh and we get to a certain point where there's a switch back and mel's like those sidewalkers run out let's switch to the other side and i'm like okay cool we switch over and i realize we have fucked up because when <laughs> yeah. you switch over uh they are driving on the left side yeah so they can't see you when they do the switch back as they're oh, no. turning the corner. Oh no. So there is three or four cars that are coming down that immediately have to make a gut <laughs> millisecond reaction to not hit us. Oh, oof. And thankfully, me and Mel are wearing very bright backpacks. Okay, I'm wearing that's a bright, good. Oof. I'm wearing a bright pink backpack that is massive, so it's very hard to miss. And yeah. she's wearing a fuchsia one, same size. Yeah. So it's very hard for them to see. It's very hard for them not to see us. But Mel is behind me, so she's closest to the on, oncoming traffic. I The most helpless I have felt as a man in a relationship in my entire life, because I was like, I can't save you. <laughs> you were like, I give up. I, like... 
what do I do? Like, like yeah, Ugh. I can I can get run over after you, and that's about it. <laughs> uh, so, it's... thankfully, we squish ourselves up against the wall, and the traffic goes. And I'm like, babe, we gotta cross again. We can't stay on this side. So we yeah. cross over yeah. again, and there's a light at the very end of this driveway. And I'm like, that's it. That's, I, I can I can feel it. If it's not, like, we're staying with those people. <laughs> we're just gonna like fuck it. I'm I'm over it. Um, we get down there and it has the name of the resort below the light, and I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. It's a two minute, like maybe one minute hike up to the driveway, and we turn around the corner, and it is beautiful. Nice, it's nice. It's incredible. Uh, is this Mel? The- mm-hmm. Is this the place where your uh, flip flops are too small? Yes. No. Wait. No. 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 That was, no, no. That was Kyoto. That was before this. Okay. Um, we get into the actual Rio, uh, Ryokan, and they act as if they've been expecting us, and it's all been preordained, and they've known the entire time. They're like, <laughs> "Oh, thank you for showing. Like, you're just in time." Go Welcome. Take off, take off your shoes here. We'll go ahead and hold them. Don't worry about picking them up. We'll take them wherever they need to be. Go ahead and put these slippers on. Leave your bags. Don't take that off. And you're and That's... me and Mel nearly weep <laughs> open. Like <laughs> it is oh, so man. bad. Like I'm pretty sure I nearly cried that night. And <laughs> what I tell you. It is the number one experience everybody needs to experience when they come to Japan. Yeah, I I, I mean it with everything that I can stand yeah. on. Like it is, it is the n- go to a ryokan. It doesn't have to be in Hakone. Don't do this if you don't want to. It is not for everybody. Not everybody has the dynamic that will make them like get yeah. them up the mountain and still be able to talk in a couple or as friends afterwards okay <laughs> that's funny but if you can go to re- go to a private onsen ryokan and just stay there it doesn't don't go and look at stuff like if it's like a really nice place it, it has everything there they got espresso machines they got snacks for you stay there and just soak it in and enjoy yourself because Amen. oh my god the food and the bath guys the bath holy shit i didn't realize i was a ba- bathing person i you are I, now I, I i bathe now and the bath, the bath it, that we have now not even close was it a Japanese soaking tub, or what, what kind of bath was it? So it was a standard brick tub, but it was being filled with natural mountain spring water that was being heated by the thermal vents. Was this a community tub, or in private, your room? Private, in the room. Really? And guys, the water... I know you guys think that you know hot. Mm. You, you don't. Yeah. You, you fucking don't. <laughs> so... You, oh my god, it's so dope, but at the same time, it's so fu- it's so hot. So you got to run a little bit of cold water in. But when you get there, it is met like you you don't have to do anything but bathe, man. You just eat and bathe. That's it. Hey, Kiko boy. So yeah, that is my story of nice. Why you need to go to why you need to go to Japan? It's, two years, I, two years, I, man. I'll be there. I, I love you. I love you. Nice. Uh, well, uh, you know, fun stories are fun like story. the best sometimes for trips. I I feel so, like almost yeah. every trip that I've ever been in, there's always something crazy, <laughs> and I feel like that those crazy moments are oftentimes more longer lasting uh, in your memory than the easy ones. Absolutely, absolutely. I just and can't wait you, to hear Mel's side. I know, you, right, yes, man boy howdy you you will probably get it at some point in time but uh i will say that mel did an amazing job documenting the entire trip so nice if you speaking of speak like yeah yeah please share with mel i texted her i don't know if she told you but oh thank you sorry i have received a delivery you can just put it right there and i'll grab it thank you um 
When I okay, so locally there is a very old restaurant that I attend, and it is called uh, I can't remember because I'm thinking about Japan, but mm. it is North Carolina. It is very old. It has got a bunch of like piratey stuff on it because I think they came from a crazy ship. But the wife of the white man that owns it, <laughs> who inherited from his father, she's Japanese. Mm-hmm. And when we were talking, I was like, oh, my best friends are in Japan right now. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, that's amazing. And then I show her the Instagram videos. Yeah. And yeah. both of them are just enthralled. They're both just like, what is she doing this on? Dude, my wife was what, what kind of camera does she own? She must own like she a professional is. camera, right? Is that no. there's no way that's an iPhone? It's and so I texted an her and I was like, iPhone, guys. Yeah. It was an iPhone. Dude, new and they phones were both are crazy. like they're like, is she a professional cinematographer? Like, is she does the, does she do this oh, for a living? They were just gifted, dude. My wife yeah. is on another fucking level, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Nuts. It's amazing. That's funny. Yeah, dude, like, like, phones I, are crazy. Watched, and Mel does a great job. Again. I watched it again today because I was explaining to other people and I was like, holy shit, like this is actually like really good. Yeah, like geez. I would I would save this and like show it to people and be like, this is why you need to vo- visit Japan. Like I would show it to like a travel agency, be like, you need to hire this person. I think I think if Mel did that video, that video editing for your wedding video. Oh man. We got to see, I think we all would have died. We would have broken. We would have never recovered. I would, I wouldn't say that she would do a better job, but I would say she would be at least equivalent to what, what was, what was produced. Cause like, I think she would have made all of us cry, like sobbing. I don't think, honestly, I don't, I don't think that's her language through it though. Like I, I feel like hmm. she's very much like, uh, an emotional uh she she goes by an emotional response of what she sees so if she sees something and she feels something she records it and that's what at least that's how she that's how how she explained it to me so it's not so much like a technique she doesn't say like oh this would be a great show of me like changing the focus and making it look like this or that it's literally just how she feels and what it translates to the film and i feel like that's what makes this trip and how she's documented it so special because she's literally just feeling things and make, making it into a video like literally how she felt on the um, for the japan trip is those stories so it's just it's in, it's a it's a awesome body of work i'm literally bragging about my wife on a podcast and i don't care it's amazing yeah it's- <laughs> i mean anybody that was at eric's wedding ish sorry this was the pre-wedding knows that nat's wife would win american idol yeah, easily yeah, yeah she yeah. did great Not she easily. killed it no eric's mom doesn't know that because she was on the phone and she's really uh, upset about it Ooh, oh, yeah she will she will think about that forever yeah yep. but yeah but we have videos so, <laughs> my uh oh, my my trip to japan was incredible my trip with Mel on this trip was, uh, what was it? Kind of uh, life changing, I will say. Nice. Yeah, I will definitely say that I process things differently. Like I, I see the world a little bit differently because of her. So yeah. nice. That's dope. Fantastic. Man. That's dope. Fantastic trip. I'm glad. I'm glad you had a fantastic trip, man. So, yeah, um, long story short, um, if you go to Hakone, don't take the buses. There's a railway that takes you halfway up and then talk to your Ryokan and have them come and pick you up from the station. Because guess what? They do that because they're a high flutin hotel that is not going to make its people hike up mountains to get to them. They wouldn't do that. If you're sp- if you're spending up to what you're spending, yeah. they're not going to make you hike up the mountain. There's, they're not going to do it. So yeah, things I learned let the, let it enrich your life and your soul. Cool, cool. Nice, nice. That's that was my experience in Japan. I like it. Oh. I like it. Well, with uh, with that, I mean, look, Anthony, you got a lot to top there. So um, yeah, go for it. What have, what have you been, what have you been playing? What have you been up to? 
first. We have what, 29 minutes? <laughs> 20, 29 minutes, but we're still good. We're still we have good. 29 minutes. Okay, I'm going to resist telling my story about the trailer getting a flat tire and stuff like that. Like, oh, another okay, time. okay. Next next time. Next time. Next time. We'll tag it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a note gonna on it. We're going to leave this one with one awesome That's epic story. Anthony tire story next time okay incredible um so we're gonna keep it to the normal podcast stuff for the most part but i will quickly re-mention peaky blinders such a good show. six seasons six episodes a season just started watching it and why do i mention it because it is a whiskey bourbon show they are constantly drinking iris whiskey and other drinks and when you watch it, if you've watched Yellowstone, you'll understand you must watch it with <laughs> a drink in hand. And you might only want to watch one episode because otherwise you're going to black out because they drink a lot. And if you drink every time they drink, you're done. But the whiskey we had today would be pretty great for that. It's kind of light on the, on the uh, you know, it would be pretty great. I'm going to stop there, though. I have been playing two games. Oh my god! I remember. Don't repeat the, the games that we no no. Play. Okay, I have been playing Warcraft Rumble. Oh no! Which is mostly because I have a uh, World of not World of Warcraft. I have the BattleNet app, and it does this great thing where you say this friend is a favorite, and I have a few of those. Both of you, obviously, and I think uh, Ari. And like the pigs, and I will get a direct notification that says Ari is playing over Overwatch. Pig is playing World of Warcraft. Eric is playing Warcraft. Rumble. Eric is playing Warcraft Rumble. Eric is playing Warcraft. I got like twenty five <laughs> oh, notifications no. saying Eric is playing Warcraft Rumble. I don't know if he remembers. Uh... But I like texted him at one point. I was like, "Hey, Eric, I see that you're in Do Not Disturb." On on Battle.net, just so you know, that doesn't stop people from being told that you're playing a game. <laughs> He's not telling me. <laughs> I saw him playing the game so many times. I was like, this has to be good, right? So I go and try it, and I played that. I I was in a situation where I was like not doing well physically, or like I was tired. Like it was like I like destroyed my body one day, and the next day I couldn't move. And so I played Warcraft Rumble for like eight hours straight. Holy shit! It's dude. uh, it's pretty fun. It is a real time strategy mobile game, but on the iPad, it's pretty amazing, and it's really good. It's just that there's the strategy part of it is amazing. I of course despise some of the monetization. I despise mm -hmm. the monetization because. It's fun. It's so much fun for you to play. But when you start getting into it deeper and deeper, you're like, hmm, this is going to take forever. That's how they I get you. This game forever. But if I pay money, I could get to the end of this game very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't like that it is pay to finish. Well, well, pay to sense, finish is hard. Pay to win. You have to remember this is exponential, too, because the time investment. Okay, so so... Let's explain <laughs> some of the features of Here this game real quick, because I, I do want to talk about the monetization of this, because we, we've yet to really talk about monetization on the podcast. That's but fair. Essentially, this is a new mobile game by Blizzard Entertainment in the Warcraft universe. It is a lot like Clash Royale, where there are some mm -hmm. towers, and all you do is place your characters. And then they go out and just do their thing after that. There's some nice strategy to it. There's some optimization. There's that card playing mechanic of like, I'm going to use a three cost card to kill his four cost card. And that's a better trade. So I'm going to have mm. more energy after a while than he does. All of that's in there. Now, just like Clash Royale, it has a system of leveling up these cards. And the leveling up <clears throat> kind of happens over time and you pay some experience for it and that experience gets more and more. That is not where the pay it to win really comes into play because the levels don't really matter that much in PvP. It's so much fun without it. You don't have to care about it. Yeah, it's you don't have to care about the levels, but where they get you is this concept of rarity. So each card has a common um, an uncommon, a rare, and a legendary rarity. And 
the things to upgrade your rarity are so easy at the beginning to go from common to uncommon takes like you have you have you have to get three iterations of the card so if you have a zombie card you have to get three zombie cards oh no and then it goes and then you pay a little token and then you get it right mm -hmm. then if you want to get a rare you have to get 10 of that card and this is really expensive by the way because if you're talking a normal card you pay like 90 to unlock the card and then 90 to buy another one if it's a leader 90 what? it's 120 coins so the currency okay. that you earn by playing the game but that is limited it is limited because the campaign has a limited amount of gold it gives you and then twice a week there are an, there's an event that comes out where you have another limited amount of gold that you can get so it's very limited in that sense there's other ways that are more complicated <clears throat> But eventually, you hit a wall, and that wall is, I'm not making nearly as much progress anymore. But if I bought gold, I'd make a ton of progress. And then it's just annoying. Yeah, but here's the thing. To get from rare to the final level takes like Legendary. 45 or whatever of the card. I can't kidding? remember. It's yeah, insane. It's insane. It, 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 it's insane. Everyone can get to like com uncommon. You do the three. That's not too bad, especially for the ones that you yeah. like. Mm -hmm. And the game has some sort of weird, not actually randomness that is more likely to show you a card that you actually use right now. Yeah. But here's so. the part that gets you. So each of these upgrades unlocks a talent slot. These talent slots change that character for PvE and PvP. So for example... You have one character that's a skeleton army or a necromancer, and he summons two guys. If you have a common version, he summons two warriors. But if you get a rare version or an uncommon version, you unlock a talent. Then you can get a talent where those two warriors are two wizards. And those two wizards can attack air and ground units. Then if you unlock another one, it'll make it so when the necromancer dies, it'll summon two more skeletons after he dies right jesus and so while leveling up your character doing the rarity and stuff like that doesn't make you stronger these talents cost Definitely. a lot because by the I way you away. have to buy the talent and the talent is separately. worth 250 it, coins separately this is where it gets yes. really bad though oh. because you have what they call the grid and the grid looks like a slot machine oh, and no. and every 24 hours it shows you a new row in the three by three if you have a big red button though you can refresh the whole three by three and so you get presented with a talent and you're like fuck yeah i finally got a talent for this hero i love this hero i'm gonna buy it without thinking about it but guess what you just made the biggest mistake of your fucking life <laughs> because if you go to one of the websites like nof.gg <clears throat> who tells you the, the what is good and you oh. look at that leader and you see their talents guess what it's almost always over 90 percent one talent is actually good the others are shit and now and you're if stuck. you get that if you do not get that good talent on the rare guess what you're fucked you're fucked because you're now you have to grind that card so much without paying to get it to rare. Like, to get it to uncommon, not too bad with regular play. To get it to rare, it's going to take weeks for you to get one rare without paying. Weeks, minimum. And if you bought the wrong talent for three or four guys in that first week because you got a bunch of uncommon cards and you're like, oh, I got their talent. Let me unlock this new talent that I just got. If you choose the wrong one... It suckers you in, and now you're going to have to pay money to get those four guys upgraded to rare because you've literally just made those characters worthless, essentially. Fuck. So now, it's like since we only have 19 minutes left, I must say that it is legitimately a fun game. Like, it is agreed. made well. Agreed. It is actually a real time strategy game. The PvP is cool. There are major flaws. There. It is too predatory. They definitely could have monetized it in a 
you know, cosmetic way instead of purely like, oh, I can't be the best in PvP unless I pay hundreds of dollars to max everything out or take several years to max everything out. Yeah. I like will I will say the way you should approach this game don't don't pay anything or if you do pay something pay like an initial ten dollars and cut yourself off you know buy there's, it like an there's, app there's like a there's a buy it option and it yeah. gives you like percentage more everything forever yeah that's like the only it's like twenty dollars yeah. i think it's worth that 20 but, but don't pay anything you after have that, please. to resist that pressure to yeah. the pay way more. i mean this game's Sounds barely like been it. out yeah. This, this game has barely been out. It costs, it costs fifty dollars for six thousand of the currency, right? But guess what? Already, due to Thanksgiving, there's the delectable deal, which is the third Thanksgiving deal. There were two Thanksgiving deals the past couple of days that were not as good as this deal. Of course, you could have gotten them, and now there's a better deal where you spend twenty five dollars and you get six thousand. So it's half the price. And you get a ton of other things, like an insane number of other things. It is really bad. Like, guys, very predatory. It's zeros and ones. Yeah. Yeah. It's zeros and ones. Yeah. I, I, was, I was elbow deep in Genshin when I made that realization. Oh. I was like, I need oh. to stop. Yeah. It's zeros and ones, guys. No, I would say the if problem you, is that it, it is a good RTS. Yeah. I would say if you want to enjoy this game, RTS. if you want to go into this game, which I highly recommend, it is fun. Cut yourself off from the money portion. Go in, look up the talents for every card, save them in a spreadsheet or something, <laughs> and just accept that and play through the campaign and do PvP at, the, at some levels and try to beat some people, and you'll have 40 hours easy of free fun with almost no frustration buy in yeah yeah and that's the way you should do it and you shouldn't buy into it anything after that is just not worth it there are better games also save up your gold yeah I always have like at least 600 gold because yeah. the game is not random the, if they say that what they show you to buy is random they are lying because at <laughs> some point in time they are going to show you oh pay 500 gold coins and you can directly upgrade your guy to the new rarity and it is definitely worth it because it's cheaper yeah. to do that yeah. and if you just wait like the, the weirdest thing is there is a there's quests and the quests are are, are fun ish but yeah. There are bonus quests that are like three or five times more valuable. I don't know what my timing is, but I will occasionally check the game, and almost every single time, I have a, a good three or five X bonus quest. Because the game's trying to get you to stay there. It's like, oh, yeah. they haven't played in three hours. Give Let's them a give big them the thing to game. hook them in. Yeah. So you can play their game to your advantage in the free-to-play model question yeah. yeah it's kind of crazy oh we should move on eric anthony how much have you spent on this game i only bought okay i might have bought the other thing i i have only done i only did the initial 20 dollar upgrade for the account that gives you a permanent uh percentage bonus yeah i did the i did that I think I might have done like a two or three dollar thing at the very beginning, though. Ah. I was like, oh, that seems worth it. I've, I've only done the initial buy in and I've played it for at least 35, 40 hours. I consider it my buy in price for the game, which they so is. So it is a great game. You. So I, both of you. I do not fall for the, the gotcha games. They do not get me. I fell. I, I, oof, <laughs> oof. I spent. But. Oh, Moving sorry. forward, no, I, spent, I, did, I didn't. I didn't crash too hard. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Again, I'm doing that to you. <laughs> Moving forward, I have also been playing WoW Classic Hardcore nice. to get ready for Season of Discovery. Yep. WoW Classic Hardcore is incredible because it is so intense, so early. 
Yeah. I did not realize how easy it is to die yeah. in WoW Classic. Dude, it's so easy. Especially when you group easy. up with people that are constantly dying and then oh. they someone which, guys, WoW Classic Hardcore is so good that I had one of my worst ever dreams last night. Oh and no. in that dream, <laughs> I fell so far that I died because I forgot to bubble on my oh, paladin. No. And I was That's like it. level twenty. Falling is the number one cause of death. I was so upset and so Falling, drowning, by that thing. It was and Hogger. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's about that. No, 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 no. Uh, Defias uh, Trapper. Yeah, it's the Defias. Oh, terrible. Defias Trapper I, is number two. Yeah, I believe that I night think. before the dream, I was playing with my wife, and I jumped down a mountain because, like, oh, that's okay. I can jump from this ledge to here, and then that ledge to there, and I'll be fine. So I jumped down to here, and I'm like, oh, okay. So you can jump to me, and you'll be fine, love. And she jumps down twenty meters to my right. Oh no. Slides a bit, stops a little bit, but doesn't actually stop. I'm like, oh, she's okay. No, she doesn't stop. She keeps on sliding all the way oh. down. She was down to like 10% health. Oof. Oh. She almost fucking died. Oof. And it could have been kind of my fault. Yeah. That's I can't play those game. games, dude. I can't play it. I can't. I'm sorry. No. Oh. I will never it play was not. Hardcore. I don't want to play It's so good. It is good. It's but season of discovery is coming out and you got to play that with us right thursday thursday I not will, i will play, thursday I will play not it. i will play it with everybody thursday you play? after you get month, off work for a month well we after that if i'm still not if i'm not still hooked i will stop well i so the good thing is is that it's only level 25 and the raid so is black like fathom deep weeks and we have, if everybody plays to 25, we have a group of five. We just got to find five more people and we have a raid. Once we do the raid like two or three times, I think we'll, we're good. We're yeah, good. Yeah. And then we'll just stop playing till phase two. Are we playing Alliance or Horde? I have everything in the Discord channel. We can, oh, we can discuss. Of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> anyway. Of course he does. Anyway. Yeah. I'm, okay, we're back. Oh, oh my god was wait, that, so that was means that? wait so it's classic so that means there's bloodlust on one end and then there's heroism on the other well what? no because we got the runes remember so uh wait, paladin so has mean... a somebody has a bloodlust rune on um alliance and alliance. somebody has a salvation rune on that's what i'm thinking yeah, yeah. so okay. they're gonna have like 500 runes but I hope it's going to be like incredible in, an, an incredible op, uh, opportunity for them to experiment. I'm taking I do too. time. And uh, Eric, what are you been playing? So I've been doing a few different things. There are a bunch I want to talk about. I guess the main thing is I've been doing retail and hardcore. Um, I went ahead and did all of the raid for uh, for retail. I did the new raid, which oh, yeah. I will say was relatively was fun. Oh yeah, Fyra Farak. Firak. Firak, however you pronounce Firak. it. I will Firak. say Tindril yeah. is a really fun fight. Um I like Tindril on all difficulties on normal, heroic, and mythic. I think it's one of the best design fights and the most interactive fights they've done in a long time. It's really fun. Um I think okay. the fights before that are meh. They're just kind of like get to Tindril. Tindril's fun. Uh yeah, the ant is meh. Yeah, Fyrak is a really great fight on Mythic. And I wish I had enough time to do a raiding guild and do Mythic again so that I could do Fyrak on Mythic. I feel like on Heroic and uh, Normal, he's just kind of whatever. Um, Heroic's really easy for him. The, the Mythic adds a, the, the concept of juggling seeds between players. Because you can't have the seeds for too long. And that mechanic alone is really, really cool. And I was of Lady Vaj. Exactly. And like I wish they had that on heroic. It just it leads me once again to the concept of having these LFR normal heroic mythic level raids always just kind of irks me a little bit. I really wish we just had one level of raid. Mm, that's fair. Okay. And like we we stopped all of the different raid levels. It makes it more approachable so more people can raid, but it takes out the or at the very least, I wish they didn't add mechanics. I wish it was all just tuning. So if you did the raid on normal, you still got all of the mechanics. 
because it just became like tighter. Yeah, it, it like you it's less forgiving the higher you go up or you or gear checks. Like if you have DPS mm-hmm. checks and stuff like that, you just can't do them without the right gear. Yeah. Um, the only problem with adding more mechanics is that at certain point there's too much for in terms of like an accessibility mindset. Too much overhead. Too much for a person to maintain when they're playing with one arm or one leg. You know. I'm not disagreeing with any and of that's that. What they're making it for there? Hmm. Maybe, and I'm not. I'm not throwing any shade on that. I'm just saying it's imp- it is impossible for you to experience the cool mechanics for Firac in particular right now, hmm. unless you have a mythic guild. To do a Which, mythic guild will take yeah. m- a months of work. Worth of right, work, yeah. So essentially, what they're mm-hmm. doing is they're gatekeeping cool mechanics. They, behind. They, should have, they should have the entry level like they do, and then the heroic should be mythic. Like I it should like be. They should do that with tens and twenty five root man raids. Agreed. Right. I the tens and twenty. What? Why? Why didn't we keep that? This was know. a totally fine way of doing it. I don't know. I stopped playing after Cataclysm, so I don't know. Yeah. Well, they're doing you Cataclysm. The reason why classic. Disgusting. But um, wait, wait, what's classic up to now? It's, it's up to. It, it's, they're it's about to release. Lich King. Yeah, it's Lich King, but they're going to release Kata in a, like beginning of next middle year. Middle of next year. Middle. Yeah, middle. Yeah. middle. yeah, middle. Interesting. So also, man, we'll discuss that next time. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, the the like those two fights are really really fun. I really really enjoyed them. Um, outside of that, I'm doing my second hardcore character because my first one died. Uh, ha, I'm, ha, I'm level 20. Ha. Who died and how? Uh, I died on my first character before you started playing. I, I died. I was made it, it to like... Yeah, it was a paladin. I just remade the same paladin. It was like... Um, it was 30, uh, 37. I, it. I, yeah. I knew it. I, I, halfway. Yeah, I died to this. It gets a little dicey at that point. Well, yeah, I must say. It's, because, it's because of the whole fucking going up to the undead city to do Scarlet Man- Monastery. Ooh, yes. Oh. Right. It's not safe. Wait, it's not safe. PvP? Is, it, is there PvP on our server? You can turn on PvP. Okay, it's but optional. that's but that's not the problem. The problem is the the padding guards and stuff outside of Under yeah, City. It's all really tight. There's a um. There's a uh. There's a bunch of uh, the, the what's it called? Pats. They're like werewolves or whatever. Warg. Yeah, worgens, and they they're yeah. jerks. Um. But either way, I've been doing that. That's been super fun. Uh, I'm super excited for seasons of discovery, which. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to play. That'll be super fun. But the the one cool one that I wanted to bring up that I was able to play a little bit was Death Must Die. Death Must Die. And I Nat, heard about Nat, this. This is, a, this is a you one. I, I know. It isn't a Hades or a Hades 2, but uh, it's, it's a fun little, you know, roguelike. mix of Hades and um, Vampire Survivors. Dead and cells. it's definitely a lot of a dead lot of fun. Cells. No, yeah. not dead cells. It's it's vampire survivors. It, it plays like a mixture of Hades and vampire survivors. Death must die. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking of the wrong game. Uh, You're right. Uh, this is this is very much Hades. So there's different gods, and each god has like different powers and things like that. And but the mechanics are similar to Vampire Survivors, where you kill, you level up, and as you do, you get more gods come down and give you more powers. And the whole goal is to kill death. There's only one level right now. They're gonna add more. It's in early mm-hmm. access. Um, there is a lot of potential. Okay. Uh, I think if they keep updating it, similar to how Vampire Survivors does, this. Definitely has a few things that I like a little bit more than Vampire Survivors. Um, I mean, but it all depends on updates. They got to add a lot more content, but it's fun. I think you in particular, it'd be a fun one to try out. You might enjoy it a little bit. Yeah, maybe. But I, well, I, for a second, I thought it was have a nice death. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not yeah. have a nice death. Not that one. It looks that kind of Diablo 2 esque. Um, so it has similar things to Diablo 2. It actually has an inventory similar to Diablo 2. So they put the inventory from Diablo 2 in. 
and they took the play mechanics of um, Vampire Survivors and they put the ability mechanics of Hades. It's those three systems in one game. And that's kind of the core concept of the game. What would happen if we took the equipment from Diablo 2, the play from Vampire Survivors, and the abilities from Hades? And that's what they did. And uh, so far, pretty, cool. pretty fun. Pretty fun. It's, it's a very easy... This would be a great game for like a Steam Deck type of deal or mm -hmm. something like that. Like sitting on the couch. You could pretty much Probably mindlessly probably. play this and have a lot of fun. Yeah. So... Well worth picking up. Game to look out for, guys. Yeah. Uh, Mari Mariachi Legends. Mariachi Legends. Mariachi Legends. I it it showed up in my ads. To be completely honest, it was thrown at me by the ad gods that be. But it looks and sounds gorgeous. Mm. So I'm not sure if it's like actually what? like what? secretly dope. What artist but did it, this? You know, this I, I gotta I gotta look up the, the guy who did the art for this. It looks so similar to um um it looks so similar to mm -hmm. what's it called? It is not made yet. It is a Kickstarter. I'm so sorry. God dang it. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, God yeah. dang it, dude. Oh no. Bastards. Bastards! It's not going to be after another two years. Oh much. no, we're never oh, going to get mind. it. Well, never. Land release date is 2024. Shut up! No, it's not, Oof. dude. I have I have Kickstarters that I started like in 2021 that said like, oh, it'll be 2022. It's like, no, I'm still waiting. Katana Zero. I I I feel like it's, it's the similar. same similar. artist who does Katana yeah. Zero. It could be. It could be. The pixel art is very reminiscent of that. Katana Zero is one of my favorite games. So. It's a gorgeous looking game, though. Yeah, it looks I good. Probably will, I probably will be backing it, honestly. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm at, guys. Uh, looks oh. gorgeous, and I'm really stoked about it. It looks cool. Yeah. Well, with that, we must go. Oh no! <laughs> no. <laughs> no! Until tomorrow. I mean, next yeah. week. I mean, tomorrow. I mean, yeah. next week. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> well, uh, stay, yeah. stay away from the people who are wearing masks. Take care of yourselves. Yeah. Enjoy the holidays. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, and enjoy the holidays. Um, <sighs> and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye.